Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you so very much for joining us and letting me join your day. Once more, my Bible is setting open to the book of Galatians in chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, if it's possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there. In a minute, I'm going to begin reading Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6. Well, this is the Friday edition of Bible Tract Echoes. I hope that you are already preparing in your heart and soul and mind to be in your Bible teaching, Bible preaching local church this coming Lord's Day. I have seen, and perhaps you have as well, a growing movement among people calling themselves Christians who do not think they need the local church. My friend, the Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And may I politely say that if you're one of those people that attends only Sunday morning and that's enough for you, and your local church has a Sunday evening service, you get out and off the sofa, turn off the television and get to Sunday night church as well and be there at prayer meeting time, pray for the work of the ministry. Now, there's my little soapbox for today, but let's get back to our study here in Galatians chapter 1. Here's my question for you. Are there other gospels? Are there other good news stories by which sinners can be freed from their guiltiness before God? According to the passage we're going to see today, there are no other gospel stories like the biblical story of grace. There are no other stories that free people from their sin. Over the last decades, we have heard political leaders and even many religious leaders say that there are other Gospels. Some of these religious leaders are pastors of some of the largest churches in the world. Many follow what they say, but you and I are not here to see what other men say. We're here to see what God's Word declares. The true Christian community of believers has been, well, frankly, they've been ridiculed because we hold to this exclusivity of Jesus Christ as being the only Savior, the only means by which you and I can gain heaven. We gain heaven because we deal with a sin issue. When we say that we are are not referring to the Hindu definition of Christ, we're not referring to a Mormon definition of who Jesus is, we're not referring to the Jehovah Witness definition of Jesus, we're talking about Jesus Christ as declared in the Word of God. Now, this stark exclusiveness comes into full view in the text before us today. You and I believe that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no lady, no boy or girl comes to the Father except through him. Now, if you struggle with that, you stay with us here. Get your Bible and join us. Galatians chapter 1. In my hand today is a great gospel tract. Uh, We do this one both in a regular type version and in a larger print version. I give out the larger print a lot simply because it is a little easier to read no matter whether I'm giving this gospel tract to a, a person whose eyes are good or an older person. The tract in my hand right now is entitled, You Can Know. You Can Know. The subtitle is, Real Answers to Eternal Issues. Dear friend, I picked this track today to emphasize because God wants us to know for sure and not be confused, not be troubled in our mind about am I going to heaven or not. This simple clear gospel track will tell you biblically what God has said about where are where do people go when they die and why do they go to heaven or why do they miss heaven and go to hell. Those are pretty important issues. Here's a great track. You can know. 
at the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to be giving you some ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. If you'll do that today, I'm going to send you free of charge a complete sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. Now, I'll do that every day, but I I want you to do it today. I don't want you to postpone that. You'll forget. You'll forget. I'll forget. Do it today, please. Get this track. You can know along with the rest of the full complement of our English gospel tracks. All right? Please have a piece of paper and pencil ready. Come with me now. Galatians 1, I begin reading at verse 6. Here's what it says. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, Paul is talking about him and the other apostles, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. I would call that rather strong language, wouldn't you? Now, yesterday I began using uh, some outline titles to help us walk through verses 6, 7, 8, and 9. Let me uh, give you those titles here right now. Each title has a two words uh, has two words in it. The one first one is the true message. The true message. We talked about that yesterday. The second one I'll begin with today is the traitorous men. The traitorous men. And then we're also going to talk today about the troubled minds. All right. Well, if you missed yesterday's broadcast, you can go to our website and listen to it. But come with me now. Let's talk about traitorous men. Verse 7 says, there be some, referring to people, there be some that trouble you. If you turn over to chapter 3 of our book, it says and asks this question, who is it that has bewitched you? Chapter 5, verse 7 asks the question, who did hinder you? There are people that are causing problems. There are religious people, preachers, that were perverting the gospel, We're going to see that these men were trying to have a, well, a hybrid Christianity. They wanted to both obtain salvation by combining the works of Jesus Christ at Calvary plus keeping the law of Moses. When we speak of legalism, biblically, we're talking about somebody trying to add to the grace work of Christ a work, a a keeping of the law, doing some work to earn and merit God's grace. Legalism in our day is being used in an unbiblical manner. Sometimes people say if you have standards in how you live for Christ, then you're a legalist. That has nothing to do with legalism. The Bible calls that holiness. The Bible calls that consecration. The Bible calls that trying to work out your salvation and apply the biblical truth in a practical manner. That is a good thing to do, to have guidelines on your life. And it's a good thing to do to teach those guidelines to your children, teach those guidelines at your church. Now, sometimes people take those guidelines and twist them into becoming uh, supposedly a means of salvation, and they're not that. But legalism, biblically, is trying to add works to grace. That's the biblical definition. But at the end of verse 7, we're told that there were some people perverting the gospel. What does that word pervert mean, anyway? Well, the Greek word that's translated here means to literally turn something from what it is into the opposite. That same Greek word is used in Acts chapter 2 of the sun being turned to darkness. Now, that's an opposite, isn't it? By the way, the same term is used over in James chapter 4 of our laughter being turned to weeping, to mourning. That's an opposite. That's what it means here. These men, these traitorous men, were telling what the Bible, what the verses here call another gospel. It calls it that in verse 6. They are saying that what they are preaching is exactly like Paul. It offers exactly what Paul's gospel offered, but it doesn't. They say that their gospel is another of equal quality, but it's not. They were perverting the gospel. 
the Apostle Paul preached that Jesus paid it all to deal with our sin. These perverting men were preaching that keeping the law and doing good works aids in the saving of your soul. Paul preached a gospel that allows you to rest, to rest and rest on the finished work of Christ. It's called having peace in your heart. But these perverters taught that you must earn and work for your salvation. They taught that you must rest on your own efforts. But friend, when you do that, you never know when your work is enough, do you? You cannot rest. You're always trying to gain salvation because you're not sure you've got it. What a hopeless situation. But now let's come to my next word. I've talked about here the true message. We've talked about traitorous men, but verse 7 talks about troubled minds. Troubled minds. Uh, This word troubled here is used in the famous verse over in John chapter 14, verse 1. Jesus said to the disciples, let not your heart be what? Be troubled. There in John 14, Jesus did not want his disciple troubled or perplexed or confused or in fear about the future. Jesus said, you're going to come where I am. Remember that that, that, uh, Philip says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? And Jesus answered, I'm the way, truth, and the life. He didn't want them troubled, perplexed about the future. Here in Galatians 1, God does not want believers, any believers, particularly these believers in in the area of Galatia, to be perplexed or fearful about their salvation. Are their sins gone or not? He wanted them to know. Are they in a right and forgiven status with the holy God or not? God wanted them to know. This stuff is important to God. 1 John 5, these things are written that you may know that you have eternal life. Old evangelist John R. Rice preached a no-so salvation. Our founder, Dr. Paul Levine, preached a no-so salvation. Uh, uh, Evangelist Fred Brown, gone to be with the Lord, preached a no-so salvation. Well, come back and look at verses 8 and 9 of our passage. Twice it's repeated here that those that pervert the gospel are under an awful curse. There are curse, the Bible says. The Greek word here is pronounced anathema. You probably heard that word before. Do you know what it means? It means to be doomed for destruction. Doomed. What a politically incorrect thing to say about another person. But that's what the text says. Aren't we supposed to just simply get along with all the religious teachers of the day? No, my friend, no, a thousand times no. When teachers knowingly pervert the gospel of grace, they are a traitor to God, troublers of people, and there's a condemnation on their life. They will not enter heaven. The book of 2 John says if we, we are not even supposed to aid those that deny this truth about Christ. Okay, friend. Let me ask you, what are you trusting in to gain an entrance into heaven? The gospel of the Bible, by the way, is not first a gospel about heaven. It is that, but it is first, the first thing the gospel is, is a gospel about your personal sinfulness, your love to commit sin, and your desire to to continue in sin and not want to live a righteous life. It's about your sin and it, it sin that's embedded in your life that you need to be freed from, forgiven of, and be cleared of before a holy God. Condemnation sets on your life. Has that condemnation been removed? If you say it has, how? If it's not by Christ alone, then your condemnation still sets. Oh, friend, salvation is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Come to Christ. Receive him today, now. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. 
Remember, the word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTractsInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.